In 1874, David Kalakaua became king of Hawaii. Oftentimes called the Merry Monarch, I think he's looked upon mostly for his, his lighter side and his love of music and dance. But his majesty was intensely nationalistic and intently driven by a need to, I think, preserve the sovereignty of Hawaiian rule in the Hawaiian kingdom. At first, Kalakaua allied himself with the landowners. It was natural because he himself owned thousands of acres. In 1876, he traveled to Washington to secure a treaty so that Hawaiians could sell sugar to the United States tax-free. By 1885, almost all the sugar plantations were in the hands of foreigners, most of them the grandchildren of the original missionaries. The more money they made, the more they tried to control the internal affairs of the kingdom and the actions of the very king who had laid the groundwork for their fortunes. In 1886, the conflict with the king escalated. The United States, in exchange for renewing the Sugar Treaty, demanded rights to Pearl Harbor as a fueling station for American ships in the Pacific. But King Kalakaua flatly refused to grant the concession. King Kalakaua became aware that the benefits of this sugar industry was not going to him or the chiefs or to the Hawaiian people, but had gone to the Americans. And he was not about to give up the independence of Hawaii, even if it was over only just Pearl Harbor. The business community was in a panic. Leading the opposition was a young, hot-headed lawyer and journalist named Lauren Thurston. He formed a secret society of white businessmen. The Hawaiian League joined forces with a citizen's militia, the Honolulu Rifles. The Hawaiian League took action one night in July of 1887 and went to Kalakaua with a document that they had drafted, which was a new constitution which limited his power and forced him at the point of guns to sign this document. And it was a constitution that stuck in the gullet of all Hawaiians. The king called it the bayonet constitution. It turned him into little more than a puppet and gave non-Hawaiians more voting privileges and influence in the government. In his diminished state of authority, Kalakaua had no option but to sign the Reciprocity Treaty with the United States. American warships now had a permanent port at Pearl Harbor, adding to the United States' continued intrusion in Hawaiian affairs. In 